Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, this is actually TIFA's first webinar, so we're really excited to have you here, and we hope that this is going to be one of many webinar series. Uh, so if you have any um, maybe ideas or new um, um, topics that you would like us to discuss in future webinars, uh, feel free to write down in the, in the comment in the chat below, and we'll definitely consider that for future webinars. My name is Vishak. I'm a marketing manager here at TIPA. I'm based in Israel, so it's actually pretty late at night here. It's like 9 p.m. I'm going to be your moderator during this webinar. So down below, you can see that there are two buttons. One is the Q&A button and one is the chat button. So after Anya will present uh, her presentation, we're going to have a short Q&A session. So any questions you have to ask, um, things that you're not really sure of, feel free to put that in the Q&A and I will collect all those questions and share them with Anya at the end of the presentation. And also, if you have just general no uh, notes, comments, uh, anything you can put in the chat below, either to the entire group or to me personally. So feel free to do those. To do so, um, this webinar will review the field of sustainable packaging in the fashion industry, uh, specifically as to how you can choose your sustainable packaging. I know that it's a very confusing topic, and there's like a lot of information out there. Uh, so we hope that this webinar will help you just clarify. Uh, and assist you in making your decisions when you're choosing a sustainable package. Uh, I would love to introduce you to our very best Anya Tyson, who's our fashion sales director in the US. Uh, Anya is based in New York. She's been working in the sustainable fashion space for about 10 years now, addressing environmental and socially conscious issues in the American fashion landscape. Uh, she's worked with amazing brands, which I can never seem to pronounce their name properly. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pass on the torch to you and Thank the floor you. is yours. Feel free to introduce yourself a little bit more. Thanks, Avishag. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anya Tyson. Uh, like Avishag said, I came actually from the fashion and apparel space, uh, working in apparel and accessories since 2004 with a focus really on emerging and sustainable brands um, in the luxury space. And the, I joined TIPA in 2019, honestly, just because I was so inspired by the mission and the possibility of having this really wonderful replacement for plastic. Um, plastic is an issue that plagues the fashion industry up and down from our garments to our packaging to you know, our transportation and every single part of our supply chain. Um, and I was so moved by the possibilities of TIPA within my industry that that's when I decided to join the company almost two years ago. Um, and like Avishak said, this is our first webinar. The reason we decided to put this together is because we receive a lot of questions that are all sort of not the same, but very similar. We wanted to give a forum for a space for general information to start conversations, um, to answer some of your questions. And also so that when you reach out to us, you can ask even more complicated questions, having all of this background information. Um, so with that, I'm going to share my screen to share with you how to choose your sustainable packaging. Um, I just want to add that while I'm giving the presentation, I won't be able to see your chats, but anything that you would like to add or address or any questions that you might have, please add them to the chat box because we do have time carved out at the end to address anything that you guys would like answered specifically. So thank you so much for joining and here we go. <laughs> so in fashion, we recognize that for most of you and for most of your brands, packaging has traditionally been a part of your manufacturer's cost of goods, your cut, make, trim. Uh, it's not something that you've purchased or really had to research directly, and yet in the push to improve your sustainability standards in your own company, you're suddenly in charge of overhauling this practice. Plastic is overused, but it's also an incredibly diverse material, and since there's no magic bullet solution to replace it, the market is full of options that cater to different needs. In the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about those options. We'll talk about the pros and cons. We'll talk about exactly what are compostables and what does compostability mean? Um, and then we'll also talk about sustainability communication, how to communicate your packaging to your clients. So while we know it's very popular to focus on retail carryout bags as our primary plastic concern, we also know that there's a much deeper problem, particularly in our industry approximately 180 billion plastic bags are produced every year to store, transport, and protect apparel and accessories alone, which means just the B2B portion of your business from your manufacturer to your warehouse. Sometimes these don't even reach the customers, but they are there in the world and they're often used only once. 
we know this function is essential to the manufacturing and delivery process of every fashion product and that attempts to bulk pack or go packaging free for the manufacturer to warehouse leg of this product journey result in damages and loss. Uh, you guys are seeking change, but sometimes you just don't know where to start. So plastic itself is an incredibly diverse material. It's lightweight, it's cheap, it's durable. There's really wonderful things about plastic. But in 70 years of commercialized plastic, we've yet to find an economical way to dispose of or reuse it. So as the consumer market is demanding an end to poisonous single-use plastic, many options have come to the market as a replacement. But each of these options attacks a very specific existing function or job of today's plastic. And so the landscape of replacements is very dense and very diverse. How do you choose the replacement that's right for your business specifically? One option you have is reusable. Many companies have turned to reusable packaging for circular business models. So if your business model involves sending products back and forth between your warehouse and your customer, reusable shipping containers can lessen the environmental impact of your transportation, especially if you would typically use plastic pouch for each trip. So if you work for something like a rent the runway model where you're sending lots of product to a client who's then eventually going to return it to you, reusable packaging can often be very useful for this. The pros, of course, are that you're minimizing waste, you can use it multiple times, and the package itself can be a valuable product on its own. The cons, of course, is that it's not, not always an option when you're taking into consideration your own chain of supply, um, which is really, you know, uh, the vast majority of fashion businesses that are doing only one-way shipping. Reusables can also be really expensive, so it's something you should really only invest in if it's something that makes sense for your supply chain. There's also starch-based compostables. If your shelf life needs are relatively short, and especially if your packaging is only back of house, which means that it never interacts with your wholesale partners or your customers, starch-based compostables could be a good solution for you. Starch-based compostables are typically opaque or only semi-transparent, not super durable, and they're not meant to be used more than a few months after production. However, they're relatively inexpensive and they can be useful as transit bags for things like samples or production elements like zippers and threads and things like that. So the pros are that they're relatively cheap for sustainable packaging, and they're usually home compostable, which is a really great standard. The cons are that they're not very durable. They have a pretty short shelf life. They can biodegrade on your products during storage, and they have pretty low quality properties. There's also recyclable plastic. It's often referred to as a sustainable solution, and in some areas like rigid bottles, this can definitely be true. However, in flexible packaging, it's really just not. Uh, less than 2% of flexible plastics are ever actually recycled, this is according to the EPA, the US EPA. Even then, it's only a temporary detour to their eventual destination, which is the landfill, or worse, the ocean, or any other animal habitats or inside of the animals themselves. So of course, the pro for recycled plastic or recyclable plastic is that it's highly durable and it's cheap, just the same as you know, any other uh, plastic. The cons, of course, are that less than 9% will end up get, getting recycled, and also it can only be recycled for a limited number of times. If you're looking for a replacement for the typical plastic poly bags you use to protect your products in the journey from manufacturer to warehouse to end consumer, high-end compostables might be more appropriate for you. Um, high-end compostables, which is what I refer to teapot as this high-end compostable, they're transparent, they're durable, they have longer shelf life expectations than their starch-based relatives. Transparency and durab durability typically translate into better quality controllability and also few fewer avoidable loss prevention incidents. So the pros, of course, are that they're highly transparent, they're home ours are home compostable, um, and they're highly durable and shelf-stable. They're really built to emulate the properties of plastic. Uh, and the only con, honestly, is that they're a somewhat more expensive solution because you're really paying for what you get. The so very important element of compostability is certification, which guarantees the amount of time a material will take to break down and return to nature. TPAS packages become compost in less than six months, and in many cases, much shorter. Timing is also an important element differentiating between compostables and biodegradables, as biodegradable materials do not have an assigned and certified breakdown timeline, leaving it up to conjecture as to when the material will break down. 
In this slide, you can see the uh, package journey for a teapot bag, starting from its actual use when it is a zipper bag for consumption, then added to a compost over nine, 16, and 24 weeks when it's broken down entirely in the compost in absolutely no harmful way. So if I'm taking a brief look at how we viewed waste treatment through time, initially we thought everything, uh, or we put everything in a landfill and thought that the earth is big enough to take it in. And today we know that that's not the case. So we turn to recycling, thinking that this will solve all of our plastic waste issues. Only we know that the plastic crisis is only growing. So recycling didn't prove to be a sufficient, sufficient solution. Many plastic items are not actually recycled and it still doesn't provide us a real circular solution because recycled items do eventually end up in the landfill. Recycling only postpones the inevitable, which means that it's not fully circular. Today, we know that it's not enough to reduce waste or to recycle. We need to turn our waste into a resource. Beyond all of these options, we know that, oh, sorry. Beyond all of these options, there is plastic that claims to break down, which ends up as microplastics in our waterways, our air, our food sources, and our soil. Enzymatic plastic is really great in a recycling environment, but as we know, only 2% of flexible plastics are recycled in the US. And the problem is not that just we can see a plastic bag, the problem is the plastic itself. Plastic that breaks down does not stop being plastic, we just stop being able to see it. It's currently estimated that Americans consume about 250 grams of plastic per year, which is the equivalent of eating one credit card per week, which is pretty disgusting. <laughs> and so what does compostable mean? Compost is a natural decomposition process of organic materials in a hummus rich soil amendment. A compost environment has heat, humidity, and it's rich with a diversity of microorganisms which eat each other in the process of breaking down organic matter. The science of compost is approximately 12,000 years old and could be considered the original form of recycling. The creation of compost from safe, certified organic materials supports regenerative agriculture, which supports the management of climate change through carbon capture in the farming process. To support this process, non-food compostable materials must be certified by a third party certification body in order not to harm the compost and eventually the earth. Unfortunately, because the appetite for sustainable solutions is so high, there are lots of counterfeit compostable packaging options on the market. It's easy to assume that any step towards compostability or sustainability is a positive one, but if a certain formula is untested or uncertified, or if it's not in line with regulations, it can prove itself to be more poisonous than plastic and even more of a liability for you. So what should you look for when you're examining your options? The first thing that you should always find is certifications. Is the product you're examining certified by a certification body such as TUV Austria, BPI, Seedling, Australian Bioplastics? Remember that testing itself does not equal certifications and certifications are publicly shareable. The record should be forthcoming. So if you're talking to a sustainable packaging solution and they're unable to provide you with the certifications that they claim to have, that should be a big red flag for you. The other issue that you should always pay mind to is language. Are you unable to claim that this product is biodegradable in all regions? That's because this product is not certified and without the certifications, you open yourself to lawsuits in those states and countries. So if you are looking at solutions and you see language on that packaging that says that you cannot claim that it's biodegradable in the state of California or Maryland or such, um, you will know that to be a red flag. So why teapot? Tipa is what I like to call a high performance compostable. Compostables are not all the same. And as I mentioned, they might be engineered to tackle different plastic problems because plastic has a lot of problems to tackle. Tipa is engineered for transparency, superior hand fill and increased durability. We started our work in the food world where protection standards are extremely high and those standards naturally align with fashion. When you do not know what to look for in sustainable packaging, it can be very tempting to choose the least expensive option, but the least expensive option can often turn out to be the most expensive, leading to product loss prevention issues, lawsuits, and other issues that are avoidable just by choosing the right materials. 
Tipa works with about 90 designers currently, some making t-shirts, some presenting luxury runway collections, and what they share is their desire not to sacrifice the functionality that they're used to from plastic in order to shrink their waste footprint. One popular attack against compostables, from plastic makers especially, is that they're difficult to collect. The idea that compostables cannot be disposed of commonly or casually is a boogeyman argument that can be taken down with a very simple Google search, compost drop off in my neighborhood, which I really encourage you all to do after this webinar. In the entire United States, there exists no municipal flexible plastics collection program. All flexible plastics need to be disposed of in a dedicated drop box outside of the grocery store or big box retailers like Target. It's a really common uh, misunderstanding that I see a lot of people making that you can put your flexible plastic bag into your curbside collection bin and hope that it goes to the recycling facility, but at the end of the day, that bag is going to a landfill. Typically, compost drop-off is no more difficult to find than plastics recycling drop-off. Many municipalities have food scrap and yard waste collection, and dedicated drop-off points exist in most towns and cities. True, this collection and infrastructure continues to develop, but plenty of options are already available. So before you write off compostables, ask yourself, is the person telling me that there are no drop-off points also trying to sell me some plastic right now? Communicating sustainable improvements to customers can be a really big struggle. It's something that we hear about from a lot of incoming clients that are reaching out to us for the first time. Um, especially if there are parts of your supply chain that still need sustainable improvements, uh, like your manufacturing, your fabric, and packaging is only really your first step forward. TIPA works with each of our partners to design communication language and strategies that supports relationship building and loyalty between the brand and the client. But not all parts of your supply chain can be improved at once. So when your first step steps are steps that you can stand behind with education, awareness, impact, and partnership, your audience will grow and learn with you through these improvements. It's really important to have these partnerships with the people that are able to bring you forward into true sustainable solutions. Thank you guys so much. Um, I know that we've been collecting your questions throughout this presentation, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that we can address any of the specific questions that you guys might have. Anya, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, I've also seen some technical questions. So just to clarify to everyone who is uh, attending this webinar, uh, tomorrow morning, everyone's gonna receive a thank you email uh, for joining us. And in that email, you'll also have a guidelines. Whoever wants to receive the presentation of today, we'll definitely share that with you. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we do have several questions. Uh, so I'm gonna start with some of them. Um, <laughs> One of them was, uh, is TIPA planning to get involved in rigid plastics? Oh, that's such a good question. We get requests for rigid plastic components quite a lot, actually, particularly slide locks on zippers um, and filaments for things like uh, textured materials or compostable fibers, that sort of thing. Um, the short answer is no. The longer answer is that we are really working on perfecting the R&D for the flexible plastic replacement um that we are already offering and we're always trying to drill down to make that more refined to make it a higher value proposition um so at the time no we are not offering rigid replacements for plastic all right another question was where are tipa's factories or i think the general question would be kind of what is the logistics of tipa and where sure. we can ship as well that's a good one um most of our manufacturing for tipa is through partners throughout europe so very few exceptions for the time being, but as uh, 2021 rolls along, we'll be expanding more into the United States. Um, we work with partner factories to make exactly the package that you need. So most of our custom packaging is made with a partner that's best suited in order to build the packaging that you're looking for so that we can meet you on whatever part of the supply chain makes the most sense. So we have lots of different partners that we work with to address the many different needs of the clients that we serve. Oh, thanks. Um, another question is, how long will it take the bag to biodegrade? And I think this is a question we get asked a lot. Yes, Does a biodegrade question. on the shelf? <laughs> sure, so um, I think it's really important to understand the difference between TIPA and uh, other compostables or other biodegradables because there are some biodegradable packages 
that will easily degrade on the shelf or degrade on your products and Tipa is not one of them. Um, one of the things that I like the most about our bags, uh, aside from obviously, you know, the transparency and the durability is that they're shelf stable, which means that this film is going to stay in this form until it's added to a compost. It's going to continue to protect the garment that's inside until it's added to a compost. Um, and if you don't put anything in them, they're not going to biodegrade. In terms of the time, it's actually a very important element of certification, which I touched on in the presentation. In order to be certified compostable, you have to break down within a given amount of time linked to the certification, which is either six to 12 months, depending on what kind of certification you have. Um, and so there's a very set amount of time that something must break down in order to be considered and certified compostable. Will the bags break down on the shelf or your product? The answer is no. Um, a lot of people are asking about the price differentiation. Mm -hmm. We can share uh, how much we're different, maybe from conventional, but also from starch composable. Sure. Um, from conventional plastic, it can vary sometimes, you know, two to five times the cost, depending really on where and what kind of plastic it is that you're using. Um, it, because we do everything custom, it's really difficult to sort of give off the fly answers about pricing. However, I think that one important element that we're building into the pricing is that we have a true circular solution. When you purchase plastic, when you purchase um, breakdown plastic or other elements that do not return to the earth in a healthy way, you're essentially just shooting garbage out of your business and into the world um, and there's no chance for it to come back and be a regenerative or natural resource which is something that we've built into TIPA which is essentially where the price is coming from. Um, what is the package actually made of? What is the material that TIPA is made of? Hmm. Um, Tifa makes a lot of different products, so that's actually a very long answer. However, <laughs> the thing that we use the most for uh, our fashion packaging is TP302, which is the, the pl uh, plastic replacement that I just held up for you a minute ago. Um, it can depend on the thickness, it can depend on the formula, but most often what we see is a 20% uh, bio-based formula and an 80% fossil-based formula made entirely of compostable polymers. So the fossil portion of that can really throw people sometimes. Um, so it's important to clarify that there are bio-based materials that can be non-compostable and then fossil-based materials that can be entirely compostable. The most important thing to rely on is the certification by a third party uh, certification body because they will be the determinant of whether or not something is poisonous when it goes back to the earth. Okay, thanks. I'm going to move to a different type of question, which is about recycling. Can TIPA enter the recycling stream? And if it uh, does, what happens to the recycling stream? Such a good question. And I don't want to put words in the mouth of the person who asked it. However, it's a common one that I receive because there are other compostables, again, not TIPA, but there are other compostables that I know a lot of fashion brands use that will contaminate a recycling stream. Um, which means that if you put your uh, other, other brand plastic, uh, bioplastic bag into a recycling stream, the bags that that bag came into contact with will be contaminated. Um, this is not the case for TIPA. There is, again, only a 2% flexible recycling plastic rate in the United States, so the chance of that happening to begin with is pretty low. However, additionally, in the uh, case that this does actually go to a recycling sorting facility, it is very easy to see that there is no recycling mark on this bag, and therefore it will be sorted out and not contaminate the recycling process. Yeah. Just, just to emphasize, um... Compostable packaging is not designed for the recycling stream, it's designed for the organic waste stream, in case that wasn't entirely clear. Um, can you share some case studies about companies that moved to compostable that were happy about that transition? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, we definitely can. I think the most important thing is that we work with each of our clients in a way that is customized to their supply chain. And one of the more challenging things, as I'm sure you all completely understand, is that every single fashion supply chain has its own eccentricities and its own needs. Um, I shared a page during our presentation of a few different brands that we work with, but one of the best examples is probably Gabriella Hurst, who's been a very early supporter um, of TIPA since you know, the very beginning that we became involved in fashion. Uh, Gabriella is a case study where she has changed over all of the flexible plastic in her entire supply chain, including the bags and films that her uh, fabric mills ship their fabric rolls with. Um, 
all the way down to the consumer B2B, B2C goods that are, you know, shipped directly to the customer, directly to her wholesaler. So that's probably the best example. And um, she's been working with us now for about three years. So I would call that a success story. Uh, But we also work with other brands, you know, to sort of wade in and do the things that make sense first, and then build a bigger uh, partnership or relationship, depending on what they need within their supply chain. Thank you. I also just want to mention that on our website, there's also a section called uh, TIPA success stories. So if you want additional stories, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of on the fashion industry specifically, you can see other brands that are working with us. Um, I'm going to move to another question. Who is TIPA's competition? Oh, that's such a good question. I like to think that TIPA has no competition. <laughs> um, and I, you know, that sounds like a joke, but it's really not. I haven't found anything on the market. And as you can imagine, I interact with a lot of different uh, competitive materials, but there are not other compostables that do what we do. Um, There are not other compostables that are certified home compostable, um, as durable, as transparent, as printable. TIPA is really considered the premier compostable uh, bioplastic in the world. Um, There are other compostables on the market. And as I mentioned earlier in this presentation, there might be others that make more sense for different part uh, or different parts of your supply chain. But for a TIPA, if you were looking for a way to replace the PE from your manufacturer all the way down to your customer in your supply chain, then we are the correct solution for you. Awesome. Uh, I have a question that we get quite a lot. Uh, Are there any harmful gases or pollutants um, released during the production of TIPA um, or also when it's composted? Mm, so harmful, uh, where do I start with that? Let's start with production first. So the production of TP302, which is the film that I've been showing you, um, is very similar to the production of plastic, honestly. It's extruded, it's converted, it's converted on the same machines that typically will handle polyethylene. So there's no need for investment in new machinery or new technology or any of these sorts of things. Um, it's very, aside from the fact that this is a circular material that can go back to nature, this is not so much of a different production method than you would see in regular plastic. Um, when it's added to a compost, all organic material, including Avishag and I and everyone that's attending, uh, emits methane. Even when we're sitting here at our computers, um, we as organic bodies are emitting methane. Uh, And the same is true for compost. Uh, It's methane is a gas that can be harmful in extremely large quantities. You would see this in agriculture and farming when you have uh, animal husbandry or, you know, improperly maintained chemicals or organic materials. But in compost, it's not a harmful gas because it's part of nature. I I just want to also, if we can emphasize a little bit more about microplastic, because that was an additional question. Does TIPA leave microplastics? Oh, I didn't hear the microplastics part. I'm sorry. No, it's a different Um, question. It's an additional one. Okay, okay. (laughs) That's a very good question. No, we don't because we are certified compostable. However, very, very many solutions that I hear about on the market um, will leave microplastics behind as they break down. They will do that in a compost, in the soil, in the water, pretty much any environment that they interact with. It's important to understand that plastic does that anyway. Plastic degrades over, you know, traditionally a much longer period of time. And additionally, one of the things that we interact with a lot in fashion is plastic that breaks down and will leave residue and microplastics in environments that they're not meant to be in. Um, It's a huge problem. It definitely is an interruption to nature. This is one of the things that you have to understand when you're going into the sustainable packaging world, looking for a new solution um, to stay away from, to be very wary of, because it sounds like a magic bullet and it's truly not an amazing solution for the planet. All right, we have a um, short question. Is the Ziploc also made of the same material and it's fully compostable? Yeah, so um, it is. It's not a sliding Ziploc, though. It is a push Ziploc. So it's essentially um, just extra, extra layers of the film that we already use extruded in a different format to make uh, a tooth zipper. It's really important to understand that it's not a rigid slide lock, which I know a lot of people are used to seeing on plastic bags. It's just a traditional push zipper that's also completely home compostable. Another question is, are are composting companies or composting sites actually accepting compostable packaging? Yes, and so um, the answer is yes. And then the more expanded answer to that is one of the things that we really love to do at TIPA is help our clients put together relationships with composting sites. 
Um, one really good example of that is Mara Hoffman, who you know has been a client of ours for the last couple of years. Um, we support a composting relationship that she has with a site called Earth Matter, which is here in well, where I am in New York uh, on Governor's Island. And once a year, she gathers up all of her extra teapot bags and brings them to Earth Matter, where they degrade in Earth Matter's compost. Um, and I was lucky enough to be able to go there just before COVID struck and shut all of us down into our houses. Um, and Earth Matter reported to me that our bags disappear in a space of four or five days um, in their compost, which is not quite industrial, but also not quite home compost. So it's, you know, a pretty, pretty well maintained, but, you know, uh, I would say like more amateur level than an industrial site. Okay. Um, another question, can you set the rate of decomposition and production? So for example, if you want something to last a couple of years, because compostable packaging at the moment does have a shelf life. Uh, um, Interesting. It would be really cool if we could do that. <laughs> we uh, optimize our engineering and our production for the longest possible shelf life. And we do have products that last longer than others. Um, this is something that I think we'll constantly be engineering towards, but the short answer is no, we can't engineer towards two or three or four years of shelf life because these bags, this product is naturally meant to break down within a, a certain amount of time. Um, Maybe one day in the future, we'll find the, the magic solution to that, but not at the moment, no. Does TIPA also offer bags for shipping direct to consumer? And, and, and the same, um, uh, while I'm asking this question, I also wanna revert everyone to our website. We have a full on portfolio. We can see all the applications that we're doing um, and we're also flexible for volumes, but maybe you can add a little bit more regarding packaging sure. for consumers. Sure. So um, we do create direct to consumer packaging. We have a really beautiful mailer that is indistinguishable from plastic and yet it is home compostable uh, as compostable packaging and compostable film. Um, it's fully printable and customizable, fully opaque and quite durable. I really recommend it for anyone that's interested in, you know, investing in this for DTC. How does moisture impact the material? I'm not necessarily talking about the product that's being packed that's moist, but more um, exotic locations that might have high moisture levels, for example, Vietnam or India? So we have um, quite a lot of field experience with this because many of the fashion brands that we work with ship from their point of production in Europe via sea to different manufacturing ports in Asia because we know so much of fashion manufacturing happens in Asia. Um, we have a lot of on the ground or I guess on the ocean experience with this. Um, and we haven't had issues so far with our packages being affected by moisture, humidity, um, granted, those are all things that will shorten the life of film or a bag when they're compostable. Um, heat, humidity, these are all things that we try to keep these bags away from in order to extend their life. However, shipping them in a hot container for a couple of weeks has not proven to be a deterrent uh, or an issue for many of the clients that we work with or any of the clients that we work with for that matter. Awesome. Um, and we're pretty much closing in on our, our time here. And I know time is very valuable. I don't want to waste anyone's. <laughs> Uh, again, feel free to send us all your questions. Also, if you info at Deepa, check out our website. Um, Anna, do you have any last words? No, just thank you everyone so much for coming. And we look forward to talking to you more in the future and to seeing you on future webinars. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Yeah, I feel, I feel very grateful for everyone who joined. But as I mentioned, this is our first webinar. So we're very excited and we hope that it's going to be the first Even of many <laughs> and and really your responses uh in the chat below and the q a um was very exciting for us so thank you everyone for joining and participating